What's going on guys? This is Martyrs Brigade 99 coming to you once again with another session of Dark Souls PvP. Alright guys, um, I have yet another treat for you. This will be another addition to the Battle of the Uploader series. Now, in the event that you guys may be new to the channel and you're not really clear on what exactly the Battle of the Uploader series um, I created this series a few months back, right? And the intent was for me to just kind of add a little cohesion to the community. You know, I know um, sometimes in the past, you know, I mean, it's basically like uploaders just stick to themselves, right? Because everyone wants to create a name for themselves. Everyone wants their own channel. However, I realized that we all had something in common. So one thing that I thought uh, could be cool would be for uh, uploaders to fight each other, right? So I created this series uh, for a number of reasons. Like I said before, number one, I love the game. I enjoy much of the community. Also, I'm not all about promoting myself, right? I love the series. I love the game. So it's not just about the Brigade and Dark Souls. No, I also like bridging gaps, right? That's why I'm on Twitch all the time. I'm in communications with a lot of guys, which to include not only lovers of, of not only lovers of Dark Souls, but also other uploaders, right? I mean, I talk to Peeve. I'm on his chats. I'm on Dreaded's chats. I'm on a lot of these guys' chats, right? And, and sometimes it's not even because I'm participating in a fight club or something. Sometimes I'm just there just to say, hey, what's up to everybody, All right? So that is the main reason why I started this series, right? Not, number one, because I loved it. Number two, to, breathe, to build a little cohesion. And number three, because I figured that a lot of the subs um, of either participant would really like to enjoy watching other uploaders duke it out against each other right so that's what the series is all about so if you guys are kind of new to the channel and you are uh, subscribers to people such as um, you know lands for life um, who else hell servant for which I got a beat down from that guy a long time ago with his tank build um, let's see fourth sequence I had a series against fourth I had a series against Short Dude for a lot of you guys who are Short Dude fans. I mean, a host of others. Mr. Bushido Wright. A lot of them. So if you guys ever want to see, oh, IGBX rated. I even did a series with Spades, for which it's on his channel. We're going to have to do another series for my channel, right? Because I wasn't able to record at the time. But I got to get a series with him. Now, for future... Uh, battle of the uploader series one person I do have in mind is good old Dark Souls Mind's Eye now every now and then he'll leave a comment you know on my video saying you know hey dude let's have some matches but for some reason he's almost never on right he's kind of like a Borderlands fanatic right now but maybe one of these days when he's in the forest on PS3 uh, he can swing on over to the MLB and we can get some good matches Right, so that's basically it. If you guys want to see more matches between myself and other uploaders, just go ahead and check my Battle of the Uploaders uh, playlist. You can find that on my main channel. Alright, so enough about that. Let's get into what this is all about. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys may be familiar with XAL27. If you are not, please go check out this guys' channel. I'll definitely put a link to his channel in the description box. Now, if you guys uh, are not familiar with him, let me just give you a quick um, rundown as to uh, my impressions of him. Number one, he's relatively new. But when I say new, this is not to suggest that he only has one or two videos. No, he has a good number of videos. And if you guys enjoy watching Gank Spanks, please go ahead and check out his channel. This guy has so many tricks up his sleeve. Right, I mean, he's good with the toggle escapes, he's good with the pairing, menu switching, I mean, dark wood grain ringing, uh, 
I mean, he does it all, <laughs> right? And you know, one thing that you will notice, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm even guilty of it myself, especially in a lot of, in the vast majority of my past force videos. Um, usually in the past, I would go 53 poise, uh, actually just 54 or fi fi either 53 or 54 poise. Just recently, did I start to uh, so-called gang spank or forest hunt with less than 53, right? And the purpose for that is I really wanted to get better on my menu, on my uh, toggle escaping, and I really didn't want to depend heavily on having a lot of poise, despite fighting against at least two people, right? But this guy, I mean, I'll say most of the forest videos that I've seen him engage in, he's rocked. I think like 40 poise at the most, right? Because he'll just rock his wolf ring. But if you look at his equipment, I mean, he doesn't even really have anything else. And if you guys notice, he does a lot of toggle escaping. So if you guys want to see some impressive gang spanks, please go ahead and check out his channel. In addition to the good gang spanks, I mean, he has a few um, series of matches against other uploaders. Um, as well as some other... Uh, sets of duels one set of duels in particular um, is who I would call the henchman and that is uh, X Mad X and E Mad X now I have a series of matches against the henchman actually we just so happened to be in the forest for like two days and a lot of those fights were so good that I think I'm going to go ahead and complete a uh, rumble in the jungle with those two guys because there are a lot of series, a lot of good matches in there. So that'll be an addition to the rumble in the jungle series that I'll get. Hopefully, I'll try to have for this Saturday, and if I can't, definitely for next Saturday. All right. So enough about that. So let's just kind of talk about uh, these builds a little bit now that I've given you guys an introduction as to um, not only what the Battle of the Build series is, but who XAL27 is as well. Alright, so I'm going to assume he's using the standard 40-40 um, build. Now, um, I'm really trying to decide if he's using a 40-40 or 2840 and the reason why I say that is because uh, in some of these matches I mean he kind of have two heavy weapons right so I don't know if he has the two heavy weapons because he's just high speed on the menu switching or because he's just carrying a heavy load now let's just kind of talk about menu switching me personally that's just one of those fancy moves that um, have risks so I don't engage now if you guys notice that counter hit for 728 with the Leo ring and the Balder side sword. <laughs> that Balder side sword is so OP uh, when you combine it, when you couple it with the uh, Leo ring. Okay, but anyway, um, now let's talk about menu switching for a second. Menu switching is definitely one of those fancy techniques. Right? I mean, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen some of the impressive menu switches with uh, Elite. You know, and in particular, on one of my videos, he menu switches, I mean, from a gold tracer to a uh, blood, a, a blood, what's that? Oh, a life hunt scythe. Man, I was getting tongue tied for a second there. I mean, that thing is just awesome. Right? He can do it really good. Mark Mellows is pretty fancy with it. Um, Jutas uh, 88 uh, he's really fancy with those menu switches and a lot of these guys now oh spades is another one I mean that guy can as a matter of fact spades put this video together where he's fighting one guy but he totally changes into three different NPC characters during the fight All right so granted menu switching is definitely impressive but it doesn't mean that it does not have risks Case in point, I realized early in this series that XAL27 was doing a lot of menu switching. And the reason why I realized it is because there will be times where he's just kind of, you know, walking around, kind of doing nothing, and all of a sudden he'll pull out a different weapon. So, when I realized that he was doing it, I figured that I would go ahead and add a little pressure to discourage him from doing that. 
and you guys will kind of notice this, um, you know, because I know a lot of guys, you know, um, they really want to get some of those last minute wins. So what they'll do is go ahead and menu switch to the red tear stone ring, <laughs> right? I mean, and, and I'm cool with that. It's a tactic and there's nothing wrong with the tactic, but it definitely has risks. So in other words, once I notice someone is menu switching, I try not to create, um, a distance right I try to maintain uh, close proximity because in other words if they are menu switching like I think okay he wasn't doing it right there like in other words if I think they are menu switching you want to stay close because during the time that they're in their menus you can go ahead and take advantage of hits that they don't even see coming because they're too busy trying to switch weapons or switch rings so granted menu switching is fancy you know it's kind of like um, it's kind of like reverse rolling these techniques are definitely fancy and when you see them in action in action they're really impressive but at the same time um, especially with menu switching it can be a risk now someone will argue that menu switching is one of those pro moves and I mean I don't really know if it's a pro move because in other words you can be really good at PvP and never menu switch, right? Because, you know, well, I can't even say myself because I still have a lot to learn. I mean I'm pretty decent at the game, but I wouldn't consider myself a pro as some of these other guys, right? So I won't really use myself. But I'll say um who do I Pep. I'll say Pep for example. Now I haven't really seen Pev in action lately, right? So I don't really know what he does in more recent times. But in a lot of the videos that I've seen of him in the past, he never menu switches. However, he still kicks a lot of behind uh, in Dark Souls. So in other words, is it fancy? Yes. Is it necessary to be considered a quote-unquote pro? I wouldn't think so. I would just say it's one of those fancy techniques that um, if you get proficient at it, it would definitely make your PvP experience um, a little more gratifying. I'll just say that, right? So, um, he does a lot of that. And like I said before, because I knew he was doing it, I wanted to make sure that I kept pressure on him. Right, so like I said before, in the times that he's between menus, I can go ahead and take advantage of some good free hits. Now, me personally, I just like to have whatever weapon loadout that I'm going to have. Right, it keeps me focused. I'm not distracted by you know going in between windows or none of that, and it kind of minimizes the opportunity of my opponent to get in free hits. So that's why I don't do it. I mean, it's, it's just too much. I mean. At most, I'll just go ahead and uh, switch um, weapons in between matches. But during it, during a match, no, it's not that necessary. Now, times where I will menu switch, sometimes in the forest, right? Depending upon what weapon uh, combination I'm using, you know, I might have a Leo ring. Let's just say while I'm forest hunting, and perhaps I only expect to have one or two people to fight against. However, I end up invading three, so I might menu switch to a hornet ring, but that's 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 rare. But not during duels. You guys won't really catch me doing that during duels. So enough about that. So um, aside from you know his, I think 4040 build and proficiency at menu switching, you guys will notice he does a lot of reverse rolls. He's really good. He's good at those reverse rolls as well as the henchmen, uh, E-Mad-X and S-Mad-X. Those guys are really good because when I had that series with them, I mean, they were just kind of reverse rolling everywhere. So you really have to be careful um, with his placement because he can go from in front of you to behind you to somewhat on the side of you based upon his timing and what my movement is at the time that he's attempting attempting the reverse roll so he's really good at that I mean there's so many things that this guy is good at you really have to be careful when you're fighting against them you really have to be careful I mean he's really good with the first hit toggles he's good with the parries I mean you guys can see for yourself there's many a times where I staggered him but he just basically escaped it 
So enough about that. Um, so we talked about his build. Um, pluses or minuses. I mean, not pluses or minuses, but uh, positives and negatives. There are no p positives. Well, actually, there are no negatives with regard to his build. I mean, the 4040 build is my favorite build. Right? Now, in the past, I talked a lot about my 2840 build. But after using my 4040 build for as long as I have, I've reached a conclusion that this is absolutely the best build for me. Now, what's the difference between a 2840 and a 4040? Now, the pros will tell you that there's not much difference um, aside from uh, a 12 soul level uh, uh, difference in strength. right? But they may argue to you that, well, you don't really need that because if you're two-handed, you're good to go. I agree that if you're two-handed, you're good to go. But at the same time, there are some situations where you really need to one-hand a weapon, right? So that you can ready your shield for parrying. You guys notice that? Now, that was an awesome parry right there. If you guys didn't catch it, just notice how quick those reflexes were. As a matter of fact, I was about to tell them GG because that was just so awesome. But case in point, on my 2840, um, let's just say I have to switch over to the uh, large club. Well, one-handed, I mean, you will get good damage, but you won't get maximum damage out of it with a 2840 when you one-hand it. Now, you'll get good damage if you two-handed and spam those rolling R1s, or if you attempt to do a two-handed R2. But one-handed, you know, you'll get good damage, but you won't really see the full potential of the large club. Same thing with the Claymore. I mean, you'll get some good damage one-handed, but it cannot compare at all to a two-handed, I mean, to a one-handed 40-40 Claymore. I mean, that thing hits hard. So, you know, after all this time, I really think that the 4040 build is the best for me. I mean, I can do everything with this build. Everything I want to do, I can do with it. Right? I can go ahead and switch rings. I'm not dependent upon the Havel ring. As a matter of fact, I have a weapon combination where I'm doing really good with just the Balder Side Sword and the Rapier. And usually that's what I'm using my. Uh, Leo ring combination other times. I may throw in the ring of steel protection I may throw in the uh, ring that adds stamina regeneration I may add the hornet ring if I need to I mean this build provides me with every single option out there without Pretty much any limitation. I mean you guys are going to notice even later on that I use the rapier and the um, Black Knight Great Axe. So aside from my armor and shield, I still have 17 and a half units to take advantage of. So, um, and not only can I carry up to 17 and a half units, but some of those strength weapons I get maximum benefit from. Because think about it. <clears throat> Let's just say you're a strength build and you are rocking the 4018 so that you're able to use Black Knight weapons. Now, if you two hand the Black Knight Great Axe, granted, it will hit hard. But one-handed, you're not getting maximum benefit because the Black Knight weapons still have an e-scaling uh, and dexterity. But this is not the case with my build. My 40-40 build, I get maximum potential not only one-handed, I mean not only two-handed as you would get with the 2840, but also one-handed. Right, so those are all the benefits. So that's why I say there's basically no cons to his build. No cons, right? To the extent that he is using a 4040 build, there are no cons. I mean, you guys notice he's able to carry all type of weapons, and at the same time, he gets maximum benefit out of all of those weapons. So now that I've talked about um, not only the 4040, but also the differences between the 2840 and the 4040. Uh, now that I've talked about those things, I mean, there's really nothing much that I can say about my own build because that's the type of build that I'm using. If you guys notice, this is the type of PvP that I enjoy. If you guys are familiar with the channel for a long time, I have talked about guys um, not using only one weapon and getting good at it, but really, you know, experimenting and branching out a little bit by, you know, using a lot of different weapons. And, you know, that's what I like to do. And if you guys notice, I mean, I've used pretty much almost, I mean, I've used a lot, I can't say almost everything, because there's a lot of weapons I didn't use. 
but there are a lot of weapons that I used in this series, right? I mean, I used a gargoyle tail axe, gargoyle halberd, black knight great axe, rapier, balder side sword. I mean, I used a halberd, the scythe, great scythe, large club. I probably used about 10 to 12 different weapons in this series, right? And that's what I enjoy. Now, number one, because I don't like to limit myself. Number two, because the way I see it, you kind of throw your opponent off. You know, a lot of times when I play against someone and they just use the same weapon over and over and over and over again, I mean, that's them, but you pretty much know what they're going to do, right? Because when you use the same weapon all the time, you know, you're limited to a certain move set. Whereas if you switch off to different weapons, you don't really know what combinations they're going to use. So you always have to, you know, pay attention to detail, right? Because you don't really know what's going to come at you. You know, one match you can, case in point, fight against a Black Knight, Great Axe, and a Rapier. Next match, you can go against a Murakumo and a Longsword. Next match, you could be dealing with a dual-wielding situation. So there's so many options. And this is why I like to play the way that I do. I think it makes me more well-rounded. And despite um, whether I'm winning or losing, I'm satisfied with it. Because I know that I'm getting better at not only focusing with you know, what is better for me you know, for, for the purposes of winning and losing. But, you know, I am satisfied at the point that I don't have to depend on one tactic or one weapon. Right, so enough about that. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this series of matches so far. It was indeed a pleasure having these series of matches against XAO27. And like I said before, I'm going to go ahead and add a link to his channel in the description box. And I hope if you are already not subscribed to his channel, you will go ahead and subscribe. Now, um, there's a few guys that I fought against that I said, you know, whenever I lost... I didn't feel like I was BS to death. I felt like I was basically outplayed. Uh, one of those guys are Hawkeye Allen. That guy is awesome with the PvP. He's another one that I always felt like, you know, I didn't always have to, you know, protect myself. When I lost to Hawkeye Allen, I was outplayed. Another guy is Ferris DKS. I love that guy's play style. Not only... Um, does he put forth an awesome performance but he doesn't limit himself to weapons right and not only does he not limit himself to weapons you know when you lose to Ferris I mean you cannot say why well, I was BS fished or all he did was stagger BS you can't say that about that guy because that guy will use so many different combinations and if you lose to him you basically got outplayed um, Spades he's another one now, in the past, he was kind of heavy on the BSs, but I think more recently in duels, um, he reserved himself a little bit with a lot of those stag stagger combinations. But he's another one. Elite, he's another one. Mark Mallows. I mean, when you lose to those guys, you know, you weren't BS fished. You just got outplayed. So, you know, like I said, x is definitely another one. Every single time I lost to this guy, I got outplayed. He wasn't BS fishing me. He wasn't going for the same tactic, and I think the series was awesome, right? And I really hope you guys enjoyed it uh, as much as I did. So, this is the last match of the series. So, thanks again, XAO27, for your participation in the Battle of the Uploader series. Uh, I hope you guys go ahead and check out this channel if you guys love watching those gang spanks. I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy them as much as I do. So, until next time... Martyrs Brigade is...